Well, welcome. I'm really excited to see such a full room of people here. And um, I know we have some folks that were here for Data Europe and other people who actually came all the way from the US just for this event. And it's really exciting to see everybody here. <coughs> so I'm first up on the schedule, and uh, I'm Chris Everly. And my first thing is a disclaimer. The Ditto Open Toolkit is not affiliated with either I OASIS or Ditto Vontees. <laughs> so I, you guys got a preview of this slide a little earlier. That was unintentional. Of course, if, if Ms. Vontees would like to test Ditto, we'd be happy to have that. So just a quick look at the agenda. Sorry, any chance to turn the Let's see, is this better? Do I just need to have it closer to my mouth? Okay, I'll do that. My apologies. So I left out a slide of who I am because I really didn't want to say I'm a sucker. I spend a lot of time volunteering on the Data Open Toolkit and the Oasis Data Technical Committee. And I support my volunteer work by working as a data consultant. In any case, I just have a number of short slides here to kick off today's event, a little bit of a very brief overview of what the DITA OT is, how it operates, who are the people that are involved, and a little bit of history. Um, I want to go ahead and say, please, you know, jump in if you've got questions. I'd rather take them as we go along. I think that's a little bit more friendly. So basically, the Ditto OT is a completely volunteer effort. It's an open source project. It's licensed under the Apache 2.0 license. And it's a collection of different Ant, Java, and XSLT scripts that take in Ditto and transform it to a number of outputs that have grown over time. And we operate. Again, I, I, I need to stress that this really is 100% a volunteer effort. At one point in time, there was work that happened that was funded by IBM, but that's several years in the past. So we operate with a monthly meeting of volunteers. We meet, Robert, is it usually the first week? The first Tuesday of a month between 10 and 11 a.m. Eastern. And Robert Anderson, please raise your hand. He's the person to contact if you want an invitation to those meetings. And George and Radu from Synchrosoft are the folks that sponsor the uh, go to meeting and the telephone for that event. So thanks, George and Radu. We couldn't do it without you. And there are currently, I think, three or four committers to the project. And the source code and the packages are hosted at GitHub. If that sounds a little unfamiliar, we've just recently moved some things from SourceForge to GitHub. And the basic process is that there's a series of iterative milestone releases that culminate in a major release. So here's some screenshots of just the people who tend to call in at these monthly calls. And I'll ask folks to go ahead and raise their hands. Robert Anderson, or Robert, will you just stand? Robert's from IBM, longtime did open toolkit architect. <laughs> and Yarno Alberta. Okay. Elliot Kimber. Radu. <laughs> George. And Roger. And I'm not going to stand, but I'll also say my picture is a bit out of date also. It's kind of amazing how time passes. So, <laughs> just to provide a little bit of contextual background. Um, and this, we really are going back to kind of ancient history. And some of this were even things that I've learned this week that I didn't quite have firmly fixed in my head. The Ditto OT was really developed hand in hand in tandem with IBM. 
at IBM. And originally, when um, the very first set of DTDs were made available to the world, they were posted at um, developer, the IBM Developer Works site. And it was not just the DDDs at that time, the XSLT scripts were posted in just one big package. There was no map-based processing. It was just a simple single pass processing for everything. So things have changed a lot since, was that 2000? It's either 2000 or 2001. In any case, a little bit later in time, and I'm sure you'll get the opportunity to hear perhaps Michael Priestley talking a little bit more about this during our panel at the end of the day, um, both DITA and the DITA Open Toolkit were donated out to the larger community. Um, DITA, the standard, went to OASIS. OASIS didn't want what became the DITA Open Toolkit. So IBM went through a process of donating it to the open source community, and it eventually became an open source project at SourceForge. At that time, it was quite refactored because it originally had been built using some very IBM-specific toolkit, sorry, IBM-specific tooling. So when it was refactored by a team in China, um, for example, Ant replaced Rex and Java replaced Omnimark. Just a little, little bit of a basic timeline, and I think this is something I'll put together in more detail at some point in the near future. Before I became a data geek, I actually was trained as a historian. I know, how did I, how did I end up here? <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, you know, the uh, first data package went to developer works in 2001, and around in the 2004 timeline, the DITA users mailing list started, and folks began the folks at IBM began the work of donating DITA to Oasis and setting up the DITA Open Toolkit open source project. The very first toolkit release happened in March 2005, and it was followed later that year with the official Oasis release of DITA 1.0. And this is pretty typical. You usually have a release in the DITA Open Toolkit that supports a new version of the DITA standard before the DITA standard is officially released. We have to jump through a lot of hoops at OASIS to get a standard out and released. Later on in 2006, there was a new toolkit release with support for DITA 1.1, and a year later, OASIS released DITA 1.1. Um, some of the other kind of milestones that are significant is originally it was very difficult to install the DITA Open Toolkit. You had to go out and sort, search for all the different prerequisites, install them, modify your environment, set variables. So I think a lot of people were pleased in 2008 when the toolkit began distributing what we call the full easy install packages which simply meant really all that's required to install the toolkit was to download a zip file, unzip it, run a script, and bang, you're in business. Another thing that was significant is in 2009, the what was originally known as the IDM PDF plugin, or PDF2, also officially became part of the toolkit distribution. Previously, one had to download it as a separate donated plugin and get it integrated into your setup. So I think the other significant things that I know I wanted to draw folks' attention to is in early 2011, Yarno got involved, and I think we were all very happy. Yeah. He's added a lot to the project over the last couple of years. We would not be here today without his work. It just wouldn't have happened. And since Yarno has become involved, we've had a number of changes to the toolkit that I think have gone a long way to reducing our technical debt. We've had performance enhancements, removal of deprecated codes. I'm going to also call Robert out for a massive piece of effort he did in reworking error messages and improving the documentation. 
Um, we have changes in how the release numbering happened. And um, I'm sure if some of you are familiar with, you know, looking at the internals of the toolkit, you've seen that the various transformations have moved off into different plugins to make things more modular and the code more appropriate. And we've also, probably the other significant change, you know, was a refactoring of the HTML flagging code done by Robert. And that pretty much takes us forward to this fall. We had a release of Ditto 1.8.5 in September, and here we are in November. First Ditto OT day, and I hope it's the first of many. Now, here's where I think what we're going to see throughout the day is with any questions, they'll probably get fielded by any number of us who are involved with the toolkit project or who are presenters here. So I want to open the floor to questions or comments about what's to come and encourage other people in, you know, that are part of the toolkit project to field questions. If not, we may pass things over to Yarno a little ahead of agenda, a little ahead of schedule. Thank you, Chris. Uh, 